We have heard about uh, uh, the idea of a digital guardian angel that helps us with our privacy decision. And maybe that digital guardian angel can be a virtual assistant and it can help us share. And this is joint work with my colleagues here at Stanford and advisor Monica, and it was presented at the Ubiquitous, and computing, uh, Ubiquitous Computing Conference last year. So how do people share data? Well, if we're talking about actual data like photos, files, contacts, the obvious solution that people go to is Facebook, or if they care, maybe email and message. But what about IoT devices? What about services like bank accounts? Are we gonna share the username and password and, and give out a, a full access? What about uh, devices like Nest that are tied to your Google account? Are you gonna give out to your whole Google email and password to share the data? Well, our goal is to share with fine grain control. Define who, when, where, and what can be shared. And not just username and password. And uh, of course, because we are at the virtual assistant conference, we, uh, our plan is to share through virtual assistant. In particular, we observe the virtual assistant serve request on the user's behalf. And so if they can uh, serve a request on my behalf, they can serve a request on behalf of someone who uh, might want to access my data or I might want to share their data with them. And we have designed a federated architecture that allows the virtual assistants to communicate without any third party seeing the data. Choosing a virtual assistant provides generality because all the, all the capabilities that are available to a user are available to be shared. It provides usability because it natively supports natural language. And finally, it provides privacy because we're never actually granting direct access. The virtual assistant is always mediating, is always a trusted agent that guarantees that only the, the, the allowed access is provided. And we are casting this in the framework of natural language programming. So we have extended our uh, when get do construct to be an access control construct. We added a filter on the action as well, and we added a requester in front. And here are a lot of examples that we can support. You can, uh, sh you can share your data with your doctor, you can share your email with your secretary, you can let your daughter watch Netflix at only a certain time, et cetera. And anything in Thinpedia can be used to share and to pull restrictions. So let's look at an example. Imagine a a dad wants to help their daughter monitor their house when, uh, when the daughter is away, like the daughter has a security camera. The dad might say something like, ask Alice to notify me when a security camera detects motion. And the dad's assistant will then translate that into an executable formal program. It gets sent to Alice's assistant. Now Alice is a trusted agent we'll check into a, data, a policy database if the, if the request is allowed. But we are not designing a top-down access control system so we have system administrators and managers defining policies. Instead, we want a system that is able to understand on demand. At the same time, remote execution or like sending out code is very dangerous and users are trained not to accept any request or code. How, can, how do we combine those two? Well, we take advantage of the fact that we are choosing ThinkTalk as the, as the code representation, the program. It's a very high level language. In fact, we can translate not just ThinkTalk from natural language, but also ThinkTalk to natural language. And so we can generate a permission request to Alice that matches exactly what the request is. It says, Dad wants to get notified when motion is detected on your security camera. The translation happens on Alice's assistant and so it's guaranteed to be exactly what will be executed. And so should Alice accept? Should Alice let her dad see a security camera blanket statement? Probably not, but she might wanna say only if I'm not home. So now the, uh, the assistant interprets this as a constraint and can combine both the request and the constraint that Alice applies, save this into the policy database and now execute it, send the results back to the dad's assistant they which are now displays notification motion detected. So how to check if a program is allowed? 
I will not go into detail, but at a high level, we use satisfiability modulo theories which is uh, an algorithm to check if two logical formulas are entailed. So we map both the program and the policy formally specified to SMT, to logical formula, and we check in if they actually are entailed. Furthermore, if the programming is not equally allowed, we can use SMT to also compute the largest intersection of the program and the policy and this algorithm will give us a formal guarantee that whatever we execute is actually allowed by the policy. So we have constructed all this technology, but do people really use this complexity in access control? And to, to verify, to answer this question, we conducted a survey of 200 people from the general public on MTurk. We wrote down 20 use cases of a sharing, um, here are some examples. And first we ask, would we be comfortable sharing this asset, like your credit card, uh, under only role-based control? So would you share your credit card with your teenage daughter? Would you let the Amazon uh, post courier unlock the door? Would you let your kid watch Netflix? And you can see that there is a quite a broad spectrum. Some some use cases, people are very scared, they're not willing to share. Some, some uh, people are more okay, like Netflix people in general are more okay. Then we show two additional constraints. We show fine grain control. For example, the credit card, but only for food, or only with a $20 budget limit. Or the Netflix, only between 7 and 9 p.m. And what we observe is that across the board, all the use cases improve. Everybody is, becomes more comfortable to share if you allow them to impose fine grain control. In fact, if you consider all the use cases and all the people, the number of instances in which uh, sharing, uh, people are comfortable sharing doubles once you introduce fine grain control. We also wanted to validate whether our ThinkTalk policies construct is, is understandable and actually covers what people care about. So we collected 220 use cases of sharing with fine grain control. We collected this from MTurk. We're just showing three examples of someone asking for a request and someone else replying with only under certain conditions. So the workers are not familiar with the system, they're not programmer, they have not seen what the system can do. But the interesting thing is that 85% of the use cases we have collected can be represented in the ThinkTalk policies construct, either with existing APIs that someone will have to add to Thinpedia, or with new APIs and new capabilities by the service and hardware providers. And uh, we are interested also in performance on natural language, so we applied our tool Genie, we constructed a training set, and we paraphrased a, a very small portion of it, and um, we, we found that well, we get 82% accuracy on, again, realistic crowdsourced policies, which is a, a mar marked improvement over the previous state of the art of uh, training without real data. And in conclusion, we have shown that Almond helps users share their data without losing privacy and people are significantly more willing to share if we find grain control in their hands. And we are shown that Almo lets users control sharing easily in natural language and with fine grain control. And I have a little gift for you. We have a short demo. This is work that's been done by two undergrad students, Rick and Elvis, this summer, and two master students, Tracy and SK, this fall. The use case we're interested in is helping doctors manage a large number of patients and, and giving personalized care to each patient. We are dealing with, we are dealing with um, patients who are a little older, we need reminders to take their blood pressure, and so let's, let's see. The Dr. Lee can only see 5,000 patients a year because he has to schedule regular appointments with every patient periodically. Almond allows him to give better care to more patients. Helmet, ask Bob to 
to record his blood pressure every evening. Now then, okay, so he want me to know what I thought. Let me know if Bob's blood pressure goes above 140 and 90. For different patients, Dr. Lee has different requirements. Hellman, ask Tracy to record her blood pressure three times a day. Hellman, okay, I'm going to tell me Tracy if Tracy's blood pressure, blood pressure is above 180 and 120. Okay. Patients often forget to record their blood pressure, but their almonds can remind them to enter their data. All the sent data is encrypted and no third party sees the data. Now, Dr. Lee can spend more time on the patients who most need his help. Almond, helping doctors. Congratulate the two undergrads and the two master students who worked on this project. One question.